Any material under copyright in this derivative work are used according to fair use as described in sections 107 through 118 of the U.S. Copyright Act of 1971. This derivative work is offered as is for free, no copyright infringement was intended in the making of this derivative work. All copyrighted material is the property of their respective companies. This derivative work is under Creative Commons share like non-commercial unported license 3.0. Where is the fair use? Hey, Professor, where have you been the past couple of days? I've been worried. I'm sorry, Chloe. I've been helping Gamesville PD with an important investigation. It's nothing to worry about. Good. I'm glad. What is that you're looking at? It's Reddit. The site is literally on fire over the recent release of Street Fighter V. Let me guess, fanboys. No, these complaints are actually quite justified. Oh? Why is that? Capcom appears to have released the game in a very unfinished state. What? Capcom is doing this too? Professor, what is happening to the gaming industry? Well, I don't think this is connected to what we discussed before about incomplete games being sold by the big, corporate AAA studios. Capcom essentially released Street Fighter V as an early access game, but at full price. Early access? What is that, Professor? That is a very good question. Normally we'd go to the ship of understanding, but Fanbot is currently running some overdue diagnostics. So, let's go to the living room instead. Okay. Early access is something that's rather new for console games, but it's been around for PC games for quite a while. You've no doubt heard about Steam Early Access. I think I might have. What is it? Steam Early Access is a program where people can buy a game before it's finished to help the game studios earn the money they need to continue development. As a concept, it is a good idea. It helps developers get the funding they need, and the gaming community who buys their games can give them feedback on where improvements need to be made, and on what new features should be added. In practice, however, early access on Steam has gotten a bad rap because of scammers who post games which can barely be called games, and never release updates so they stay in early access. Basically, there is no curation by Steam. They've left it up to the community. Left it up to the community? Unless there is a strong public outcry against a specific game, Steam won't remove it. Otherwise, it is up to the gaming community to curate early access by leaving a review of the game. However, you can only review a game after you've purchased it and have played it for a number of hours. Wait, you're saying in order to give a bad game a bad review you have to buy it first and play for a certain period of time? That seems fair. How can you tell a game is really bad until you play it? Yes, but it means you bought a bad game and can't get your money back. Hold on, you can get your money back for a bad game? How is that fair? Before Steam allowed refunds it wasn't fair at all. That all changed just shortly before the launch of Batman Arkham Knight. What happened with that game demonstrates how powerful the gaming community can be when they vote with their wallets. Steam may not be perfect, but they are currently the best option, second only to good old games, of course. Good old games? What is that? An online PC game store owned by CD Projekt Red. The same company behind The Witcher series. Recently, they released their own Steam-like client, but it is completely optional. You can continue to use the good old games website to buy games, and their mandate of no DRM still stands. Recently. Good Old Games has begun offering their own early access games via a program called Games in Development. However, unlike Steam, the games offered are heavily curated by Good Old Games so only legitimate projects are allowed. They've also put in place other safeguards to protect the consumer in the event a game doesn't make it to full release. Why doesn't Steam do that? Steam operates under the philosophy that there should be no barriers between a developer and their customers. 
Their aim is to make it possible for indie studios to publish games on Steam without needing a traditional publisher. However, it has become clearer than ever that Steam needs to take a more active role in curating games in early access which are obvious scams and money grabs. If you watch videos on Jim Sterling's channel it seems like there are a lot of scam games in early access. But, compared to the sheer number of games in early access there are, that number is actually pretty small. Community curation is working, but Steam does need to step in and do more on their end. But, what about Street Fighter V? The game was released incomplete but is also still under development. Doesn't this mean it's technically an early access game? Unfortunately, Capcom didn't release the game via the early access program. They released it as if it were finished and at full retail price. That is why the gaming community is upset. Oh no, they aren't going to start doing what the corporate AAAs are doing are they? No. In fact Capcom has already apologized publicly for the unfinished state of the game. Their excuse for releasing it now before it is finished is so esports professionals get practice with the games before the big competitions begin. But, rather than discount the game because it isn't finished, they sold it at full retail price instead. I can understand now why the gaming community is so upset with them. On the flip side, all of the DLC for Street Fighter V can be purchased using fight money. An in-game currency you earn simply by playing the game. This is an approach I can't see the big corporate AAAs taking anytime soon. In other words, Capcom wasn't being malicious, they were simply careless. Exactly. Despite the lack of certain core features the game is actually very good. The fighting mechanics are solid. Online play has had a few hiccups but Capcom has publicly announced that they are ironing out those issues. One of the biggest complaints is a lack of a true single player story mode. Right now, the story mode the game has is very limited, but, a proper story mode with real time cutscenes is on the way. Street Fighter V was developed on Unreal Engine 4, so the visuals are quite amazing. Several Japanese game projects were and still are being developed on new E4. The latest game in the Tekken franchise will use the engine. Games like Injustice Gods Among Us used Unreal Engine 3. I'm glad that Capcom isn't going the way of the other big studios, whose practices are leading them quickly over a cliff, and probably not all of them will survive the fall. The anger against Capcom has been accused of being overblown, but I think it's a clear barometer showing just how fed up the gaming community is with companies that do deliberately release unfinished games just so they can sell more DLC and season passes. Too many companies exploit the gaming community that way. It wasn't always like this, but greed changed all of that. Thankfully, there are companies that have resisted the temptation to exploit gamers in similar ways. There is also strong pushback against such practices by the gaming community and some in the development community. Both have come to realize that a second video game crash could come as a result, and there are people who are actively working to stop it from happening. Unfortunately, despite this a crash is all but assured, but only those companies that are the most vulnerable will be hit by it. The big, monolithic corporate developers who despite public outcry have not changed their ways, they will be the ones to fall, and if any of them do climb out of the ashes they won't be the same anymore. I see. Maybe it's better that crash does happen, so it will weed out those companies do the most harm to the gaming industry. I hate to admit it, but you are right. Unless the biggest offenders suddenly turn the other cheek, then it looks more and more like a crash is the only way to either make them change or remove them as a threat to the well-being of the gaming industry entirely. The very idea that we have to even suggest something so extreme grinds my gears, but it is all their own fault. Going corporate made them beholden to Wall Street investors, and this has over time corrupted them from the inside out. Greed has turned these once great game developers into a pale shadow of their former selves, and that disgusts me. Things never should have gone this far. We're partially to blame for letting it happen. We have the power to get a message across to game developers using our wallets, and we didn't do that. We could have stopped this from going this far, but we didn't have the courage or self-control to tell them to stop. It's okay, Chloe, we can't change the past. We can only look forward to the future. But, Professor, the crash of 83 demolished the game console market until Nintendo resurrected in 85. 
What will happen to the current generation consoles? It's hard to say. Consoles are in a slow decline, and that decline is a side effect of the exploitive practices we've just discussed. This time around consoles have something that they didn't have back in 83. What is that? The indie scene. Many have matured and are now able to release games that are almost on par with big AAA titles, but with much smaller budgets. Warhammer, N Times Vermintide is an excellent example. There will be more like it. They will help game consoles weather the second crash until the dust clears. I suspect some of the AAA studios will survive, but they will not go back to business as usual. There is hope, Ubisoft recently realized their practices were destroying the Assassin's Creed brand, and are abandoning the annual release cycle. If more companies followed their lead they can avoid a crash entirely and turn things around, returning to our previous topic. Microsoft announced plans for their own early access program for the Xbox One. Like good old games they will need to carefully curate what games are offered, or they will run the risk of experiencing the same issue Steam is having. Steam must step in and have a more active role in policing early access games. That's all there is to it. They're doing a disservice to their user community by not having a more active role in combating scams. How can someone tell if a game in early access is a scam or not? Stop being a lazy consumer and do some research. Look up the game on Google, read user reviews in Steam, and look for videos about the game on YouTube. Check the Steam discussion forums for that game also. One way to tell a game on early access is a scam is by checking the news. If there are no news updates from the developer for a long period of time it's likely a scam. There are exceptions, so again do your research before making a decision to buy or not to buy. Basically, be a smart consumer. Exactly, it is harder to scam a smart consumer who has done the research. Don't let hype trains fool you into buying into an early access game. Look it up, do online research, and from the information you find make your decision. Remember that legitimate games on Steam early access outnumber the scams, so don't shy away from making an investment in one of the good projects just because of a few bad apples. That's some really good advice. Professor. As I've said before early access isn't a bad concept. It actually helps the developers by getting them the funds they need to finish the project, and they are able to get feedback from the community who invests in that project. If handled correctly it is a system that can be very successful. Steam early access has produced some big successes. Games like Kerbal Space Program, Space Engineers, Divinity Original Sin, Arma 3, Prison Architect, Dead State, Wasteland 2, Don't Starve, This War of Mine, and Path of Exile to name a few. I've heard of most of these. A few times I watched Kerbal Space Program Let's Play videos, and Wasteland 2 made a lot of news for their Kickstarter project. In a way, Steam Early Access is a form of crowdfunding similar to Kickstarter, except when you pay you get immediately access to the game. In some ways, Steam Early Access should be changed into something more like Kickstarter. Rather than have a fixed price, offer tiered prices at set amounts with the higher ones of course offering the most rewards for investing. That would be a better alternative to how it's currently done. Yes, and, allow no questions asked refunds for early access games with no time limits. That is exactly how it should have been from the start. That was a pretty enlightening discussion today, Professor. I hope what I said was helpful. I think it was. Do you think they thought it was too? As always, my aim is to enlighten and educate. So, I hope some people came away with a better understanding. I certainly understand the subject better. To learn more they can discuss their thoughts on early access either in the comments below or over at Gamers Bay on Google+. Each new episode has its own thread, and I encourage everyone to discuss today's topic in the thread's comments. Also. Feel free to post suggestions for future topics below or in Gamers Bay. Also, remember to like, favorite and subscribe. That helps us out a lot. Bye for now. Bye. Beaming complete, Chief Valentine, the season Passatron is now in our main cargo hold. Thank Gaben, we got to it before they did.
I have placed a level 5 containment field around the artifact. Only myself or the professor can lower that field. Good. Now we need to locate the executive and find out what he did with the microtransactor. Attempts to locate the artifact via scanning have not been successful. The artifact is being shielded from detection. Then, the professor and I will have to do this the old-fashioned way. Beam me back to my office, fanbot. Acknowledge. Preparing to transport.